All right, my friends. So what we've got here is we've got a spreadsheet that basically allows us to see what happens if we purchase a whole lot of four spot tickets and play without actually having to purchase anything. We can observe the mathematical behavior of four spot without any kind of a financial investment. And then once we know that, we can figure out on average what happens to a four spot player. Let's break this sheet down for you a little bit. It's got the it's got a number of parts. In column B, is going to give you the uh, the numbers that the machine is going to pick for you. Now, back in the day, um, there used to be these big plexiglass containers with ping pong balls in them, and like a hair dryer or something underneath. And then you know the balls would blow up through the top, and then the ping pong ball would have a number on it. It was very fancy. Um, nowadays, I think it's all done with uh, with computers. But anyway, these are the uh, the twenty numbers that this randomizer has picked out of eighty. So it looks like the smallest one is a seven. And the biggest one's maybe that 75. Okay. And every time we buy a new ticket or play another game, those numbers are going to change. The you pick column in column C there, that's going to be the four numbers that, that you've chosen. Whether you pick your favorite four numbers or you let a randomizer pick for you. However you pick four numbers out of the 80, that's them in column C. Uh, cell F2, which currently has a green zero in it shows how many of the four numbers you pick match any of the numbers in column B. So right now, none of them match. And that's what you also see down here in this cumulative data uh, uh, table below. That's keeping track of, or, or, or it will keep track of, all the tickets that we end up uh, playing um, as, we, as we randomize more and more tickets. So right now, there's only one ticket that we've, uh, we've seen and it didn't match at all. Now, how do we get more tickets? So let's let's say the day has passed, we've lost on this ticket. We wanna get another game. So what you do is, on my machine, I use the F9 button. You may have to use the F9 button in combination with another button. If you get stuck with these kinds of uh, Monte Carlo simulators, just shoot me a note, we can figure it out. But I'm gonna press F9, and when I do, hot damn, when I do, I actually get two numbers this time. So you'll notice that the, the two shows up in cell F2, and also I've coded this uh, spreadsheet to kind of show you where the correct numbers are. So the 65 and the 14, those are two of the numbers that we picked up here in 65 and 14. Hell yes. Okay, let's get another ticket. Okay, that time we only got one. We picked nine and nine was there. Let's do another one. That time we got three. Hell yeah, three would be a good one, right? That means they give us five bucks back, uh, so which means we profit four. Now, uh, before we go any further, if you look up here kind of in the top right of the spreadsheet, you can see I've, I've uh, copied over the uh, distribution from the, from the quiz. So you've got the payoffs there, uh, and that's how I knew that there was gonna be a $4 payoff. And you could just keep pressing this F9 button, and every time you do, it's gonna keep track of how many uh, numbers you got right on your ticket. And then what's kind of cool about that is also what's happening down below there in that in that chart is it's keeping track of that cumulatively. So, so far I've been talking while I'm doing this and actually what's really cool about it is you can just hit the F9 button and hold it down and it's buying ticket after ticket after ticket after ticket after ticket and keeping track of the results. And what's badass about this is you can kind of see the behavior of what's happening. I'm going to stop it real quick while we're talking through this, but you can see that it's clear that one match is the most common. We've got 162 of those so far, followed by zero, followed by two, followed by three, and then last but not least, the big winner of four. Now, how many trials, how many tickets have we bought so far? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go uh, down here in cell F17 equals sum, and then I'm going to highlight these, uh, these five cells and press... Uh, right parentheses and, and, and hit enter. So, so far I've bought 350 uh, tickets. Um, and that's, those are the results of the 350 tickets that I've, uh, that I've, that I've purchased. Now, um, eventually we're gonna calculate an average, but that 350 tickets, you can think about it this way, that 350 tickets represents an investment of $350 because each ticket is, is $1. You see all these zero and one occurrences up here? That means you lost a dollar. You didn't win anything back. The twos there represent a break even, which means they handed you back a dollar effectively. So you could erase the $66 from the loss of $350. And the big wins there, the threes, each of those 12, you increased by four, which means you're up 48 
But unfortunately, the 66 and the 48 don't erase the negative 350 that you've already spent. Now, if everything I just said doesn't make sense, don't worry. We're going to deal with that uh, overarching here in a minute. But I just, I'm interested. I got I to gotta go and, and run this some more. I'm just going gonna, gonna to hold that a little bit more and see if I get a four. Let's see if I, oh, there was one. One went by. I missed it. <laughs> and since it's a randomizer, you can't go back to see what it was. But regardless. Now, what I'd like you to do now is build the probability distribution up here in cells I and J. And I want to get you started, and then I'm going to let you go nuts and finish. We've got to put the probabilities based on the cumulative occurrences that happen down here in column F. So what I'm going to do is I want to read the outcome. All four of your numbers are in those 20. Okay, so this means the, the, the event was we guessed four numbers and they were all over here. So clearly this is not, this situation right here is not, this is a two. How many times did that happen? How many times did all four of our numbers show up in those 20? Well, it was only this one time, right? So what I'm going to do up here is I'm just going to type equals. Now, I know I want to use the cell F16 because that's where that one is. And then I'm going to hit divide by and then I'm going to click on the 467, which is cell F17. And the reason I want to do that is I don't want to type the numbers 1 and 467 in there because I want them to update with new data as it comes. So I'm going to press enter. And then when you press enter and every time you press F9, the numbers are going to continually change because as you run more and more trials, you're going to collect. Oh, let me back up so you can actually see what's going on right now. There you go. So we've got some more trials down here now, even holding it down that long. I got a few hundred more. Um, or 150 more or so. Um, and in that time, look, we got another four in there. So you're seeing the probability, let's zoom back in over here, all four of your numbers are in those 20. So that probability right there is, is changing, but it seems to be hovering some, well, it just hopped up a little bit because we had a bunch of fours in a row. As I was looking at it, that was actually crazy. There's another one, wow! We got a whole random clump of fours where we didn't see him for 500 trials, we just got a whole bunch, but you can see that random clump is now starting to fall back away again because that was a random clump. This is, it's a fun little side note actually, this is what happens in casinos when you know a whole bunch of people win uh, at a certain time and everybody all of a sudden thinks, oh, it's a hot hand or it's a hot streak or something like that. Well, it's not at all what's happening. What you're seeing is you're seeing random behavior of variables. And the way you temper that is by doing exactly what we're doing here. You just simply let more and more trials occur and those random clumps, as you can see right now, begin to get tempered by the number of trials. So what I want you to do is to finish out the rest of this probability distribution and then head back to the quiz and we'll finish it from there.